Okay, uh, in this video, let us uh, consider again the same uh, positive edge triggered uh, deep deep flop. So, as we discussed in the previous uh, uh, video, so we found that uh, the T setup time, that is uh, the time at which the input data should be ready before the positive edge of the clock. So, it was found out to be three times the uh, propagation delay of the inverter plus. Uh, two times the delay of the propagation delay of the transmission gate so that uh, we can have a valid D input taken as the a valid input for your D flop and it was also found that the hold time can be zero meaning uh, as soon as the rising edge goes uh, as soon as the uh, clock edge goes high so you can even take out the uh, D input even if your D input changes from 1 to 0, 0 to 1 it will not have any impact on your the data that is stored and it was also found that the clock to queue delay happens to be one transmission gate delay plus the uh, K propagation delay of one inverter so by the time uh, the QS responds to the uh, output voltage so it takes hardly this plus this time so that you can get the output so <coughs> we will see uh, uh, one major issue with this type of uh, configuration if you can see this clock so clock is actually being used okay this is representation of one bit so this is a representation of one bit of your memory so if, if you carefully look at okay, this clock which will be common for uh, the entire uh, sequential circuit which is there used uh, which may utilize us n number of such type of bits if you carefully observe this clock is now driving you can see this is one pass transistor sorry there is one uh, nmos transistor there is one pmos transistor and there is one more nmos and there is one there is one more pmos so we have four transistors being driven by this uh, clock and clock bar and there are another four transistor to be driven by this clock and clock bar signals so in total this clock network this clock network is actually loaded by eight different gates eight different mosfets what does it mean is suppose if you have a clock which is loading eight transmission gates naturally the operating frequency of this clock is limited because it has to drive such a huge capacitive loads of all these transmission gates so this is a major drawback uh, in this particular type of implementation of positive edge trigger DP flop. We have to find out some other way where we can able to reduce the load on the clock. So when I say load on the clock, since uh, this clock network is now loaded by eight different transistors per one bit, which will certainly reduce the operating speed of the entire system. So this is for only one uh, bit assume that you have 10 such bits so the clock will be loaded by 80 such gates so naturally the operating speed of uh, that particular entire system will be uh, drastically reduced so in order to overcome that so uh, there is one more such uh, d flip flop proposed which is again for a positive s trigger d flip flop which is expected to reduce the load on the clock network the proposed or, or the second type of uh, <coughs> D flip flop again it's a positive edge monster slip flip flop we're going to have uh, a reduced load on the network so you can just have a look at the configuration how it goes so this is my transmission gate and uh, we have two inverters there in back to back <coughs> conditions so that they're going to hold the value and uh, this is suppose if it is driven by clock bar so this is driven by clock <coughs> me. and this is now again you have this is now driven by clock this is now clock bar and then this is for holding the things so let me just uh, write uh, this is t1 T2, so I can write it as I1, I2 as the transmission bits. This is I3, I4. Let me say this is my Q output. 
suppose if you say this as your uh, d input so <coughs> we know that whenever clock is so of course we can certainly analyze when clock is uh, uh, zero of course it can be zero one it is zero one so if, if you call this as a master so this is master and this is slave <coughs> whenever the clock is zero you can see whenever clock is zero this is clock bar this will become one this is zero so this is on meaning this master will be in sample mode suppose if i say m will be in sampling mode that means it takes whatever is the input as it, it will going to allow the input to come to the uh, what flip-flop so qm will be exactly following suppose if you say this is qm QEM is actually of course the inversion of it so it is going to certainly take this sample take this sample inside so during the same period since clock is given here since clock is 0 here and this is what this is now 1 so it is in off condition in such case assume that if it was there at uh, if the value that was stored is 1 here this 1 will be fed back as 0 this 0 is again made as 1 because now this slave is in hold mode so if i say this slave this is now in hold mode so this is holding the value of this as one only because we assumed it as one suppose during <coughs> uh, this time okay suppose if i say this is my qm so during your okay you can just uh, okay you can write your d value here suppose if your d value is keep on changing what you can do is you can just indicate that uh, modification that is variations that are happening on your dn something like this suppose if i write this way so this is varying so now suppose if i say this is qm and qs so qm is now in sampling mode so this is keep changing as long as uh, the clock is zero you can see it is in sample mode whereas this qs is in hold mode you can just write this as my qs it is holding whatever the value that was uh, retained there so it is now holding it so once your clock becomes one this goes to hold mode so this uh, qm will go to hold mode whereas this will go to sample mode so sample mode means so uh, at this point of time so this goes to hold mode and then this goes to sample of course we know that the out the input to your slave is the output of your qm so naturally this is your output it holds whatever is the value that is there here will be sampled here if it is zero it remains at zero if it is one because here this is remaining the output of qs also remains zero then again here you can see so this is now since your clock is zero it is now in sample mode this is now in sample mode whereas this is in hold mode this is in hold mode if you, if you can again uh, this again goes to hold mode this will go to sample mode but the sample mode is nothing but this value which is coming down here so if you can carefully have a look at this at the positive edge the qs value modifies so that's why this is called as positive edge d flip flop at the positive edge of the clock your output voltage changes output voltage changes just have a look at <coughs> the load for the clock network so in the previous case we saw that uh, this entire clock network was driving actually eight different transistors from this master and slave if you, if you actually see this one so this is also exactly same as that of a positive edge flip flop but load on the clock network is actually reduced by half you can see now the clock is now actually driving only four transistors in the previous case it was actually driving eight different transistors now it is driving only four different transistors in this way we can able to certainly operate this type of positive edge flip flop with relatively greater speed relatively greater speed of course uh, 
let us try to identify let us try to understand okay, what are the difficulties that are faced in this particular uh, <coughs> type of uh, configuration assume that uh, the value that is stored before we before we allow it to sample assume that this is now equal to uh, of course now assume that this is in hold mode so when it is in hold mode so this should be zero this should be one so this corresponds to hold mode assume that uh, this p you have it as one here and this is zero the same zero is coming over here as one and it is in hold mode you can see this is off this is also off because 0 to a nmos means off 1 to a nmos is sorry pmos is off suppose of course uh, let us assume that the d input is 0 d input is 0 now let us assume that d input becomes 1 d input becomes 1 and you sample this suppose if you whenever you make this equal to 1 and make this equal to 0 does this one value is allowed to go into this now it now you are making this turn down but if you can see here since the value that is there here is one the value that here driven by this is zero so if you consider this as node a now suppose that if this is node a node a is now driven by zero and as well as by this inverter 2 inverter 2 is actually pushing a zero this transmission gate input is actually pushing a 1 so this is now pushing 1 this is now pushing 0 here now what is the actual value that will be get retained because we know that this value which was 0 because of the previous value has to be now made equal to 1 has to be now made equal to 1 because I am there in the sampling mode suppose if this is stronger than this when I say this is stronger than this this may not be able to drive it because this dimension is of course uh, it, it is so large that it can able to retain this at zero retain this as zero so to avoid such type of uh, uh, condition always this feedback inverter should be made relatively weaker when i say weaker so instead of having the dimension of this very uh, large I will make of course I'm just symbolically representing this as a small inverter whenever I say small inverter the dimension of this inverter is less so that the resistance offered by this is more but this is made stronger if this is made stronger even if it is zero which was being driven by this will be overpowered by this T1 transistor now this is forced to become one because this is stronger than this so this uh, problem of making this output voltage at this point as a ratio logic this will be ratio logic suppose if this is very strong and this is bit weak so make sure that always this feedback inventory is weaker compared to t1 so that you get the desired value of your d sampled onto this node which is true here also so it is always necessary that we have to have this feedback inverter to be of as small as dimension as possible so this has to be a very small in dimension so that you you, you won't uh, this is now not decided by this but it should be decided by whatever is the value that is there here has to be sampled onto this this value can sample over here only when this t2 is stronger compared to this feedback inverter so this is uh, one such uh, uh, condition of course one such requirement we have to always ensure that the dimension of uh, the feedback inverter should be weaker so that you can able to sample the value of the present input onto your uh, network on, onto your circuit so that it, it samples the exact value let us see one more uh, problem that is associated with this <coughs> Okay, let me just rewrite this D uh, uh, flip flop using transmission gates. Let me make it a bit bigger, and this is a smaller inverter to ensure that this actually the potential at this point is dominated by this, not by this one. 
it is now again sorry this is uh, again in most then I have this is a bigger trans bigger inverter and this is a smaller inverter now this this entire uh, system is this entire back-to-back -back inverter is used to hold the logic then we have it as D this is clock bar this is clock this is now clock this is clock bar <coughs> assume that uh, you had a value you had a value actually which was uh, <coughs> uh, let me just uh, assume that you want to sample this value so let me, let me just consider uh, a condition where you have it as uh, one here there is a one value and assume that okay this is now in uh, this is now in sample mode this is in hold mode when it is in hold mode so this is actually uh, zero this is one when it is in sample mode this is one this is zero now you can see uh, suppose if the value of this is zero the same zero will come here and that one will come here but of course you are keep on sampling of course assume that this is zero for a long time so if this is zero same zero will come out here because this is on and this zero is put as one here and it is you are there in the sample condition so assume that uh, you have it as uh, what uh, one here the earlier value is one it is making it as zero this zero is coming as zero and then zero is being made and it is in held in the hold mode so now this is in hold mode assume that this this role changes so assume that this goes to hold mode and this goes to sample mode so when does this will go to sample mode for this to go to sample mode this has to become 1 and this has to become 0 and of course this is 0 this is 1 so when it is 0 means it is off when it is 1 means this is off this is going to of course this should go to hold mode since you are sampling here so what will happen the value that is stored here so what should actually happen is this one should go to here there because uh, if you can see here so as soon as you make this equal to one this turns on this turns on if 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 this is weaker than this one so what might can happen is instead of this reaching here as one this may make this equal to zero because we know that what do you mean by sample this one has to go here suppose if the dimension of this is stronger compared to this one if, if, if it is then instead of making this 0 as 1 which was supposed to happen instead of this becoming 1 this 0 may make this 1 as 0 so now you are actually making a back propagation so this reverse conduction will happen provided if this is stronger so in the previous case also the previous case also we found that uh, <coughs> this whatever value that you you are getting if it has to properly sampled onto the uh, desired point here this has to be made weaker if you make this weaker even this back propagation will also of course reverse conduction will also be get stopped because if this is weaker then this zero cannot make this equal to 1 because since this is weaker this will force this point to become 1 because this is having a lesser resistance compared to this one so naturally if you are making the dimension of this as smaller compared to this one both the problems will be get solved meaning this may not the sampling may not actually uh, be spoiled so this one has to go here it will certainly go here if the dimension of this is weaker uh, if the dimension of this is weaker so as we discussed in the previous case so this will not uh, actually be overwritten by these values so it will be uh, this reverse propagation and making this value as per our requirement will be satisfied if the dimension of this feedback network is made a uh, feedback inverter is made smaller compared to the transmission gate so that will going to solve uh, both the issues so always it is uh, ensured that this dimension is made smaller to this transmission gate 
that is one requirement so that the overall load on the clock network will be reduced to half compared to the the transmission the mux based uh, positive edge defect 